Hi, this is Kate from Isalicious Designs. Well, today I'm going to show you how we make the little removable pants for our tiny tot Minecraft Steve. Here they are. This is what we're going to make today to basically finish off his little diamond armor set. So we've already done the hat, uh, helmet. We've already done the body, our body of Minecraft Steve. So now we're just going to work on his little pants. And they, as you can see, just go over your normal uh, figures, trousers and feet. So let's get started. I'm using turquoise bands. Thankfully, my rainbow loom order has come in and I have uh, turquoise again. I'm going to use stitch markers. Um, I'm using the ones that lock. I find those absolutely superb. If you don't have these, you can use uh, paper clip, C clip, uh, S clip, uh, bobby pin, safety pin, anything like that. That works. OK, you're going to need your hook. I like to use a 2.75. Uh, I find that with larger fingers, I'm not stretching my bands as much, and that's really, really important. And the other thing you're going to need is some stuffing. Oh, no, you're not going to need stuffing. We're not stuffing this, are we? So you don't need stuffing. We are going to start by doing a chain. And your first one, your little end cap, is just going to be one band that you do a figure eight. Only once. You're not twisting it around multiple times. And you're going to chain 20 onto that. Okay, so one, there's a little end cap here, and then you've got a chain of one, just a normal chain, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten. This is the eleventh stitch, eleven, which is going to be important. Twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. 18, 19, and here is 20. Now, straighten this out. You want to make sure there's no twists, okay? So straighten it out until you have, at the bottom here, you're holding on to one loop. You've got the two loops of your little end cap, okay? We made two loops. You're going to hang on to one loop, okay? Just the one, making sure that this is all straight, you're going to take that loop and put it on the end of your hook, like so, and move this one up and over. Right, this is how we're joining it. You're then going to go into your first stitch, which is right here, and do a single crochet, and put your stitch marker on that as our first stitch. Okay, and then we're going to do making sure that you're not twisting this, you're going to do a single crochet in each of these chains, okay? But please make sure you don't twist. You don't want it, you don't want to be doing, you know, instead of going through these two here, going through these two here, okay? You want to make sure that you're going through the uh, top. So we're going to do an entire round a single crochet and I'm finding it difficult to loom. I broke all my nails off the other day. I couldn't believe it. One by one they all went and I'm, I'm nailless which feels very odd for looming. I don't know if it feels odd for you if you've got long nails and suddenly you lose one you suddenly think oh my goodness so very carefully make sure you're still going through the right side of your stitch both loops of it there we go
coming round to the end here. This is my last stitch. And then I have my, as you can see, my stitch marker is through the first stitch. Now, if you count how many you should have, about 21, I believe. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and 21 is on my hook. All right, now, we are going to do something with the bottom of this a little bit later, okay? Don't worry about it just now. Right now, what we're going to do is continue doing some single crochets, and we're going to do four rounds of them, okay? So I'm going to, we've done one round, okay? But we're going to do one, two, three, and four. So we've got three more rounds to do. I will catch you back when we've all done three rounds. I'm going to change my stitch marker to my new stitch, and around I go. Catch you back when we've done four rounds in total, okay? So I have completed my four rounds, one, two, three, and four, okay, which are the four rounds that you see up here, okay, so we've got the four rounds here, we've got our four rounds here. Now what we're going to do, I've put a stitch marker on my last stitch, which is here, this is my last stitch here, and still on my first stitch here. I'm turning my work around, okay, now... If you have, uh, and I'm on the bottom of it, so this is where I've been working, this is where I've been doing my, my stitches. If you have a look at the bottom, you'll see the knobbly bit where you started, where you had your end cap and you started. This was where we joined our end cap to our first stitch. So what you're going to do, put your hook through that stitch. You'll, you'll see that it's sort of raised a little bit higher. Um, so this is, this is the stitch that was with our end cap and... If you remember, we pulled one loop through to attach, and here's my second loop right here. I can see it right here. That's that little second loop here. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to make our legs here. We're going to, as you know, when we do our little man here, we go around and we find the center point, and we then chain four to go across. We're going to do the same. What we're going to do is make sure that we have nine stitches each side. Now this little stitch here, right next to where we did the end cap, we're not going to count. Can you see it? It's absolutely tiny. And that is where we join these together. We're not counting that one. Okay, so what we're going to do, I'm going to keep my hook on here. I'm going to grab another hook so that I can count with you. So ignore this little one that's right next to it. We're almost treating that like a slip stitch. So one, two, three, four five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So in this tenth, I don't know why I talked about the eleventh stitch. We want the tenth stitch. You're going to put your hook through it like that. And then if you count the other side, and again, don't count the stitch that you've got your hook through. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So we've got 18 in total. We've got nine here, nine here. That's 18, 19, and 20 so these are the stitches that we're going through so what you're going to do is we want four we're going to put a, a loop through here okay one two bless you phoebe three i have a cat that has allergies poor little thing she gets so congested with her little allergies and four okay and just like we did normally we're going to pinch here we're going to take one side, draw it through, reclaim, and one over the other. So this is how we're, we're sort of forming our legs. Okay, now if you have a look, again, this is the little stitch that we're ignoring. This is our first one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So go through this first stitch here. Ignore that little one that we're using as a, as a slip stitch. And we're going to do three rounds per leg so we'll do our first three rounds so here we go through the first stitch and you're going to add a stitch marker and let's go around
come back here. <laughs> and then this is stitch number nine. Then we're going to go into our chain right here. And into the chain on the other side. And the last chain, which is here. Make sure that you have them straight, that you're not twisting it so that you're getting going through the wrong stitches. So you've gone through your chain like that. And then you're going back into your first stitch here. Let's pull this apart so I can see what I'm doing. You've got one more here. And then you go into your first stitch and we're doing our second round. Now, obviously, you're going to have more than nine stitches now because you have uh, gone through the chain that we had in the middle. So let's go round again. This is round two. Go through each stitch. My last stitch. See. And then let's go and do our third round. Move your stitch marker. So that's stitch number one. And our last stitch for the minute. We're going to take our stitch marker off this first stitch. I'm going to twist it around the other way and add my last stitch to it. Okay, because before I start going into doing the feet, the little um, way that I'm going to cover the feet, I actually want to do this side as well. And I'm going to go through, see this stitch here, which was our end cap. I'm going to do my slip stitch in there. There we go. I'm going to go in there. I'm going to pop my stitch marker on it. And then go into this first stitch. Because I don't want a big hole. So let's see how that works. So this is our first round of three. back here. No, don't unravel. <laughs> oh, I really unraveled there. Now 
if you have a look here, going into that little end cup here, well, it's not an end cup, it's a stitch that's in the centre. And then we go through our chain. Now you remember we missed that little slip stitch and we go straight into the one where we have our actual um, stitch marker. So there we go, move your stitch marker to that stitch. Now I can tell that my attempt to to close that hole so that I didn't have a hole in the um, in the trouser crotch area has given me an extra stitch because if you look 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 is on my hook but I have one more stitch here which is 14 so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little decrease in that last stitch and the first stitch so that I am back to 13 stitches instead of 14 okay and then do my last round It's not really my last round, it's my last round of the trousers because we're then going to change into doing boots. And all we're doing for a boot is sort of making a lip um, so that you can see that there's a difference between where the trousers are and where the boots start. Right, so this is my last stitch. I'm going to again take my stitch marker off, turn it round so I can add my my last stitch to it. And what I want to do is really give it a, a trial. Let's see how he fits them. I might feel that I need to do an extra round up the top, and we want to see how many we need to do for the um, for the boots here. So as, as you have a look. You can see that that's about right and then we have this boot stitch here so i'm quite happy with with how that's looking you can try it on your little man if you want to you kind of have to stretch open the legs to get them through pull his pants up so you see we do actually need to do you want to make sure that it's the same, that the waist is at the same level as as the shirt. So we do need to do some boots. Okay, so let's take those off. So for our next round, what we're going to do is actually work on the outside loop only. Okay, so here's our first stitch. We've normally got these two loops that we would go through. 
we're just going through the outside loop and we're going to do a single crochet all the way around move your stitch marker And here's my last stitch. You're going to do this on both legs, okay? So then you're going to go through both stitches and do a round of single crochet. Move your stitch marker. And around we go. stretch this out just a little bit and as you can see it just makes it so that the foot is a little bit wider okay we don't want it see how this one is quite small I wanted it to be a little bit wider so that we could fit his little shoes in and then all you're going to do on this last stitch is do a tie off so loop it off and do a tie off you can take your little stitch marker out and you want that tie off band to go on the inside of the trousers trousers, pants, whatever you might call them. Um, so try and find the loops on the inside. I can hear my little cat snoring. It sounds so cute. So here we are. I'm just going through some of these inside little V's and dragging that tie-off band up through there so that it's tied off. Now you can do the same with this one up at the top as well. It's you know, We're not doing anything further up there. The reason I haven't is just when I try these pants on him, I want to make sure that they are high enough and if I needed to do another round. So that's the reason that I've, I've not done that. So let's do our um, next round here for this one. We're working on the outside loop. I don't know if you can hear that snoring, but it's really cute. Little kitten snores. And I've got one that's got allergies. Sometimes when it's really, really bad, she sneezes a lot. I've got cat snot all over, all over the place on my, you know, I go to look at my monitor of my computer and I'm like, what on earth is that on there? And I have to wipe it up. She sneezed all over my cat, my monitor. Um, so yeah, we have to give a decongestion, poor little thing. We know how she feels. We all got allergies in this house, so it's only fitting really that our pets should too. Maybe she's allergic to herself. I'm allergic to cats. Silly, isn't it? I've got two cats and I'm allergic to them.
Okay, and now our next round, if you remember, is just single crochet. Move your stitch marker to this new first stitch. So summer holidays are nearly here, summer vacation, where the kids get something like 12 weeks off. And uh, Izzy does summer camp just uh, two days a week. So they will be the only two days. I know I, I try and do a, a video on a Monday and a Friday, and that's going to hopefully stay the same. Um, and uh, if, if not, I will record on one day and then have to do editing and whatnot on the other day that she's in summer school. So it might go down to one video a week, but I'm going to try and keep it at two videos a week. Their summer camps are so fun. They uh, take them off to all these places that I'm too scared to drive to. Uh, the zoo, the science museum, all of these different places. I'm a terrible driver. Um, well, not terrible driver. I'm scared of driving over here on the on the big highways because everybody drives on the opposite side of the road to what I'm used to and uh, I'll, I'll drive locally up and down our little highway but uh, yeah still a bit scared to drive on the big ones where they've got 94 lanes going both ways <laughs> here we go tie this off get rid of the stitch marker Hide this little band. Tuck it in. And bring it down. There we are. Now, shall we try them on and see if they fit him or if we need to do another round up the top? Let's see. Come on, Chappy. Steve, I should call you by your real name. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. That's why about me getting into trousers. Get in there. So do you call them trousers or do you call them pants? Over here I've noticed in Australia they call them pants as well, not trousers. In England we tend to call them trousers. There we go. So they're covering, they're hiding his shoes. So it's supposed to look like he's got diamond boots on. And he's got his little helmet. There he is. And all we need to do is do a tie-off band up here. Oh, hi, Phoebe. Are you saying hello to everybody? Let's grab that last band, that last loop that we had. Go through our first stitch. Oh, hello. Are you coming to say hello to everyone? Let's do a tie-off band here. Nice and tight. And again, you want to hide that on the inside of your work. Go through these little Vs like so. There we are. So he is all done. He's got his little armour. Now, obviously, if you're going to do something a different colour, like um, gold armour or something like that, I do not have a um, breastplate, uh, you know, body armour for him, for his chest, a chest piece. I don't have his chest piece for him. I think it would be a little bit difficult. Uh, so you might, you know, want to make him um, with a yellow shirt on or something like that. And then you could do yellow pants and, and a yellow, yellow helmet. But in our household, as I mentioned, we're very much into the diamond armour. So there we go. There he is, little Minecraft Steve with his removable diamond armour helmet and pants. Hope you have fun making him. If you enjoyed this video, big thumbs up would be very appreciated and subscribe. You can find out when I make new content. Take care everyone. Bye.